hungry ladies. Hey, hey, Inca, leave it. Better go check their hay. You're bold. Uh, 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 uh. No, no, leave it. Okay, ladies. Hey, Brindle! Too enthusiastic. Come on. Leave it. <laughs> See you later, ladies. <laughs> yeah. So these are the woodlands. And there's the gate into the woodlands that I'm going to be resuscitating. It's going to take two hands to open this gate, I think. I don't think it's just going to be an easy bolt. I'm going to have to lift the gate. Yep, two hands. So this gate I put in years ago, knowing that at some stage I was going to come in here and fence. You can see only in this area of the woodland, on the very edge, is there brambles. When you go further in, there is um, just ivy. So as you can see, there's a wall there and then the road is there but it won't keep the sheep in. So we're gonna have to clear a length, going around a lot of these big trees, clear a length all the way down parallel to the road. And what's really exciting to me is, now there were trees in here, there were ashes and they were dying and because they were so close to the road, we had to take them down. So it opened the canopy. And so there are things that came out or grew you can see here also that there's um, lords and ladies, some arums. But uh, there's going to be a lot of work to do. Here there are ferns coming through. But this is all area that's been disturbed by human activity. And there's loads of spindle as well, which I find really exciting. I love spindle, as you all know. So these are baby ash trees. And then here's some baby spindle. And then you see as we get up here, yes, there's a beautiful fern there, but it turns into a monoculture of ivy. There are these young trees, but the further deeper we go, the further away from the edge of the field we go, the more it is just ivy and nothing else. So an ivy can take over a place and then it only feeds wildlife twice a year. And my aim is for biodiversity, which means I want to feed wildlife more times a year. Here you can see ivy is pretty much taken over. Now, I can hear there's a digger over there. We've got a mini digger who is gonna be digging where the fence is gonna go along the road and then up a laneway. So to clear it so that we can fence it safely for the sheep so that they don't go out on the road. Anyway, here we go. Let's go see what the digger is doing. This is the other culprit that limits biodiversity. This is laurel and I'm going to be getting rid of as much of this as possible. It doesn't do much for wildlife. So between the ivy and the laurel, there's areas you can see there's laurel right there and it just takes over and shades out everything else. So my aim is for biodiversity so that wildlife can eat more than 
twice a year. With ivy, it's only twice a year. Here's some more spindle that has managed to make it up. But this is the area which had human interference. Here you can see, there's the road, cars going by. But as you go up there, there's been no human interference. There, trees have fallen, but there's been no human interference really for 40 to 50 years. So that's what I'm gonna try and rectify is human and animal interference. Chopping down something that's in the way of the fence line. Probably something small. You can see this big beech tree fell at some stage and I just leave it naturally fall. I'm not going to interfere with it. I'm just trying to get rid of the monoculture of ivy and laurel. You can see that big beech tree has fallen. This is another tree that's fallen a long time ago. This beech tree was blown over in a storm. You can see it was rotten and it just came down and I left it. Here, this is one of the big embankments within this woodland. There are several of them like this. And with time, they will be full of um, ferns. As you can see, there are some ferns here and there's some ivy and bramble. And with the sheep's help, we'll make it so that there's more ferns. You can see this is uh, where foxes, dogs, badgers, and humans have been going. There's where that was a tree, an ash tree that was dead hanging over the road. We just chopped it and left it. So this is, uh, I'm picking up rubbish. There's rubbish that I've picked up. I've put a little pile in there, but here he is clearing the fence line. Sadly, this ash tree is a dead ash tree and we're gonna have to take it out because it'll land across the road at some stage maybe. But all this chewing up the ground is really good. I'll be able to sow plants in it once the fencing is done. Here comes the sun. Yay! But I'm gonna take this rubbish away that I've been collecting. Some sort of battery thing and a water bottle. And there's more that I've thrown out on the road to pick up. Poor Java had to have his baby teeth pulled because he had his big main canines came in, but his baby teeth never fell out and it was becoming an issue. So we're having a very mopey day today. We've just come back from the vet. Poor boy. He's feeling very sorry for himself. <laughs> You're feeling very sorry for yourself, aren't you? Poor boy. Yes. Mm. Mm. He does little moany noises. Listen to that. He's feeling very sorry for himself. Poor boy. Mm. Yes. Poor fella. Mm. He's very clingy. It's not fair for puppies. 
no, it's not fair. He's had his painkiller dose for the day, but he's got painkillers for the next few days. Oh, poor boy. Yeah. Yeah. Little moany noises. Where's Miss Daisy Rose? Huh, Miss Daisy Rose, better come. Come on, Miss Daisy Rose, come on. Here she comes. You got left behind. Big horses, longer legs. Loads of rain tonight. So bringing them in. Yeah. <laughs>